before we models, I'm Philip Florey. Um, very busy week this week uh, working on this. Um, as I said, I don't do ships very often. In fact, this is the first one we've done as a video build here at Flory Models. Um, and certainly I didn't appreciate one, the amount of parts that go into this one. So as you can see down here, I've got sprues upon sprues upon sprues, and it's all these tiny little details which you add to this. And it's not just the actual adding of all the little parts, of which there's hundreds on this now. It's literally the cleanup of every single one. So you cut it off with the sprue, you come along, take off these tiny bits and to be honest this is really what you get they're all sort of this size cutting them all off then you've got to clean them up which is tiny at the best of times so when you're going through with things like skinny sticks and i've been using razor blades as well because i find it quicker to clean them all up it just takes forever but it's just things like you know we've got this is a base for the gun unit and it's made up of uh, five parts and it's just the base it's like a crazy the amount of time it takes and like these little ramps the going up to the flight deck these are made up of numerous parts and it takes forever all to go together but certainly as you can see it's it's getting there now we're quite happy of how it's coming out it's just that you know we've got plenty of bits and pieces going on the railing system took a couple of hours just to get square to make sure it's all sat correctly it's all in and again cleaning up the railings i've tried to make them a little bit lower sanded them a little bit flatter trying to give them a little bit more scale because obviously a lot of this photo etch is all on the top the same time I'm thinking to myself why am I worried because nobody's going to see it because the flight deck goes over the top of all of this and you're not going to see all this detail pretty much anyway unless you're going to get right down to it but it's one of those things when you're working on it you're thinking this is great yeah the level of detail it's fantastic and now it's getting to that bit where it's nice it's chunky it's solid and as soon as we get the flight deck on it we'll be absolutely fine. I've been playing with all the lighting and everything, I've added more wire to it, so now it will be fine. We've got red for the actual uh, amphibious deck down below. We've got then a nice sort of warm white, uh, which is going to be into this area up here for the flight deck one down below. And then we've got green for the main superstructures front and rear as well. So we've been adding more wire and soldering them on connectors and everything else, getting them in. So part three of this is up on the site now, you can watch this one today. Because of everything that's gone on with this one and the amount of time it's taken, which to be honest, I've been in three days doing that, I haven't had time to get on with the intruder. But whilst having a nosy around my partner's uh, craft box and everything else, I did come up with this stuff. Now this here is um, what they call 28 gauge beading wire, which just so happens is perfect for our purpose. And would you believe it, it comes in great colors. So we've got oranges, reds, blues, all of these things. And I think these are gonna be perfect for scratch building and doing things like that, because you know they are just such a handy thing to have around. And certainly when we were working on these engines, we talked about last week using these. I'm going to be wiring them up with this as well because it's good scale for it. it because it's wire, you can just bend it to the shape, a couple of drops of like a PVA glue or a super glue, and you're good to go. So if you are on the lookout for some scratch thing, pop down to your local hobby center. This particular one is made by uh, Impex, but 28 gauge is 24 yards, and it works out about £1.50 a sport. So I think it'll be enough to last us forever, but it does come in say great colors. You can get, obviously I've got the copper, we've got the red here, to be honest, they're hers, okay? But I have gone out and ordered um, an orange, a yellow, a blue, and all the colors you can think of that we'll need in the hobby, it comes as well. But I think, you know, and also for the money, it's one of those things, you buy one roll, it's gonna last you a lifetime, unless you build them under the models. Okay, but there we go. So unfortunately, I've done work on the cockpit for the intruder, but I haven't got enough for a full episode yet. So what I'm going to do is probably do it um, later on today. I'm recording this Friday, actually, lunchtime. Actually, look at that. It's going to be close to getting this up on time tonight, guys. So if it is a little bit late, now you know why. I haven't even started editing anything yet. I'm going through. Anyway, um, back to the site. We had um, lots going on, obviously uploading. I'm continuously uploading 24 hours a day. I've got two computers and they're grinding away uploading, one here, one at um, my parents' house to be honest, and they are uploading videos continuously in the new format. Now, some of you are gonna spot there's differences between them. I just wanna tell you exactly what's happened. Some of them are in the uh, old format completely, okay? So they're not gonna be in HD. The ones that are in HD, there's two types of formats going on. And what this is to do is when we have the new cameras and three cameras, um, some of them aren't as sharp as some of the others, okay? And I know this is all getting confusing, but basically the newer they are, the sharper they're going to be, with the exception of parts one and two of the Iwo Jima here. 
Part three will be crystal clear, no problem at all. But parts one and two are gonna be a little bit fuzzy. What I need to do is re-edit those completely in a higher resolution and format than I was doing before. Because um, some of the old ones, they were in high resolution, they got crunched down, and then they would go up to the server. So they've gone up in the high, perfect reg. Good example of this is the Seahawk. Go and look at the Seahawk. That's in our top resolution build. No problem at all. So is the Wing That Wings. That's also in high res as well. Great resolution. It's just Iwo Jima one was recorded in a slightly lower res than the others. So what I've done is I've re-edited it and pumped it up a little bit. But so far you have, and I've written them down, we have already got converted and up there. All the basic videos are all done and dusted. Some of the extra things that go with it need to be done as well. I do know that. I'll get on with those probably this weekend. The Merc of a Tank, um, you'll see that in a moment about pigments. That is all done and up and has been recoded. The Phantom build, the one on the stand, the Academy kit has been recoded, is up on the site now. The Sop with Triplane, all of those parts are up on the site now. The Seahawk is done, is up on the site now. And the F117, I know some of you have watched it. I can see the little stats going along. But they are in our new high resolution. Now, if we ever get fiber optic here, I will increase it up to 1080p and we'll probably move it up to around about 10,000 bytes, you know, and we'll do it like that. At the moment, they're all being uploaded in five megabyte format, okay? So that's five megabits coming down. It's your bit rate, not the overall. They're still like 1.5 gig for 30 minutes. So anyway, that explains all of that. So if you are wondering what's going on, the slight difference in the videos, that's the reason for it. Now, we must talk about the prize draw because I forgot it last month with everything going on completely forgotten everything else. So here's what you're gonna get. Welcome to December's prize draw. Yes, Christmas one and New Year all sort of rolled into one, so it's gonna be a little bit special. Plus the fact we actually forgot last month with everything going on, I forgot to do it. So we thought we'd make it doubly, triply, quadruply, up to you this month. So this month's prizes is all you can see right here. So we've got the Hobby Boss 132nd scale uh, Persian tank. We've got the 72nd scale Fairy Gant. We've got, we're all pulled down here, the uh, G91, the main one, which if you remember comes with the patch as well and all those lovely items in there. See, we've got to try and balance this all on top of each other again now. There we go. Uh, the pigment sets that we did a review on only last week. Okay, so they're in there as well. So that's all of those. Tucked away just behind here, you can't see. This is a complete uh, US modern aircraft set for the Italeri paint range, which I do recommend. Been using them, they worked out really well. Some of the things we've been using a lot recently is the uh, polyurethane range of bits and pieces by Vallejo. So we've got here, we've got the gloss and we've got the matte finish and we've got some of their primer as well. Lots of you always ask about where I get my Vital Bond kicker from, so there's a bottle of that for you and some CA glue to it as well. Coming up shortly, we've got a review on the pickup sticks, been sent those, so we've got some of those there as well. You'll get the grime sets and everything else. Something else which I reviewed um, and absolutely love, think it's a great product. This is the Medium Photo Etch Bend set, okay, so that's one of those in there for you. Are a complete range of sanders that we do, there's 12 in the set, as you know everything that's our entire range is in multi packs and refill packs as well so there's a massive prize value there and then certainly a full set of the floor models washes to go in with that as well plus a year's subscription to the site as well so we can't say much fairer than that all you've got to do pop to the forum it's at the top now um, and then just go in there and just put in there uh, merry christmas we have for this month okay pop it down and then it will happen on Christmas, no, we're probably gonna do it New Year's, the day before New Year's Eve, shall we say. I'll announce the winner on the actual forum and then in the next news show, you'll hear it as well. So you've got a full month to get your entries in on there. Great price, this is no matter where you are in the world, I'll ship it for nothing and uh, get these off to you. So get entering right now. Yes, it is a massive prize. It is worth a lot of money uh, and it is gonna to go to one lucky member. Remember, you have to be a member here at Flory Models make sure you put it in the right area on the forum as well. Don't just chuck it in the forum absolutely anywhere because I have to go around and find it then and bung it where it should be. Into the prize draw, fourth one from top, prize draws, click that, it opens up every prize draw we've ever had, okay? It's always the one at the top and then just put in the comment saying count me in and happy Christmas or whatever you wanna put in there, usual comments to go with it and you'll be entered in. I will pick one member out as we said before which will probably be the day before New Year's because I'm away for New Year's so I'll do it the day before and I'll do a video on it just like this. Anyway, um, we spoke about pigments. 
<laughs> so I ended up having to do a run of pigments, which is a nightmare. So um, anyway, it's members only, you know all about this, it's on the site anyway. Uh, but so anyway, some of you was asking about use of pigments. So here is a quick run through on how to do it. So pigments, now we spoke about them um, a lot. Maybe you've got, um, we've got one here. We've got the pigment sets. You can buy color sets, staining. Everybody does pigments these days, that's face it. Okay, now, how to use your pigments. Very different ways of doing it. Okay, so we're gonna break it up really into sort of two groups, obviously dry and wet, okay? Now, if you're using them dry, something, you know, perhaps you wanna give various types of effects, such as dusting, light grime, things like that. Obviously using them dry is perfect for it. The trouble is though, it's actually sealing them down and things like that, where when they're wet, that's a lot easier. So there's lots of fours and against to using them. Personally, um, from my point of view, I'm more of a wash guy, okay? And it's nothing to do that we happen to manufacture a range of washes and all the rest of it. It's just I find that I can get a pigment effect instantly by using a wash rather than actually messing around with pigments and stuff like that. Now, that's not to say they don't have their place in the hobby because they certainly do, because there's certain things you can do with pigments you can't do with a wash, okay, and vice versa. Now, if you were talking about doing it somewhat in dry, okay, first of all, you have to know is pigments are extremely messy, so always protect your stuff as best as you can. So what I'm gonna do here, we've got the Merkaba, which we finished not so long ago, all right? And all we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you a couple of simple little steps. So if we can get this onto, and you will sit on its edge, which is quite handy. Okay, so we've got it something like this. So if we just get the cameras all in position so you can see exactly what we're doing here. So if we just lift that one up just a tad. <clears throat> right, okay, so we've got the wash effect, which did all of this. This was just purely washes, no pigments on this whatsoever. And as you can see, we've got grime lines and staining and everything else like that, no problem at all. But perhaps we want to give it sort of more of a sort of dusty look, things like that. First of all, you're gonna need some quite stiff brushes. Okay, you don't want really soft brushes because otherwise it tends to flick it around a little too much. So I tend to use something like this. So here we've got sort of a short head flat brush, okay? So having a look at through your pigments with what you've got. Now I'm just using some of our old stuff. Okay, so we're just gonna grab some mud here. All right. <clears throat> so you have your jar of pigment just like this. So we're just gonna take out a little bit. I'm gonna pop it into the lid. All right, now this is just doing it dry. So you sort of load up your brush, okay? And then you can just dust it round in the area. Now, depending on the surface you're flicking it over would depend on what you sort of get. So because this is over sort of a flat finish, it will grip it a little bit, okay? But because it's just a powder, it's just gonna give a, a light hue over it. Oh, well, you can actually see that, all right? But you can see, if you compare it to the others, it's now giving it a an effect rather than anything else, okay? So we go around, and what it's done is technically got caught in all the textures of the paint, just giving it a very subtle color change to that wheel, okay? And depending on how you see it, it goes through. So what you can do, you can grab perhaps some of this mud, okay? And we're just gonna lightly gonna brush it down, perhaps just on an edge. Okay, and what I tend to do is blow off any excess you got. Don't rub it, otherwise you're gonna end up getting it anywhere you don't. But using it dry, you can just sort of do this effect. Okay, so just the bottom half of this skirt, we're just gonna add further, little bit of weathering and perhaps around these wheels as well. So we're just gonna scoot them around just to dust them up a little bit. But because you're on a flat surface, it will grab it. It actually holds onto it quite successfully. Now I was saying, the drawback to this is how to seal it down, because as soon as you put any type of sealer over this, it will fade it back. So hope, what you really want to do is aim to have this as not handling it at all, so you're left with exactly what you get, okay? But this way, we just do around here. It's just a way of adding a, another layer to your, perhaps your weathering. Okay, so that's all we're just gonna put some up over this rubber area here all right and then what we're going to do is just going to flick it around just a little bit on top of everything okay so we just pop it down and then it'll just add another layer of 
weathering in here. And you can have a lot of fun with this and you can go around and certainly if you didn't like it and it was pretty horrible and all the rest of it, you could get rid of it pretty much, I would say, I wouldn't say all of it, but you're going to get most of it off because it's dry. When you start using it wet and things like that, it becomes a real problem. But there we go. As you can see, it just added another layer of sort of grime to it. And then if you were wanted to, you could get this all to, to work here. But certainly round the back, we did it all with washes down here, but we can add a little bit of mud and perhaps we'll flick some of the back here and it'll just grime up quite nicely in these areas okay and this is just to say using them dry there's a couple of other effects you do i don't really want to wreck the tank if i'm honest but i'll show you anyway but if you put on quite a bit in a said area perhaps if we just do this rear part because we can obviously get this all off again if needed which is quite handy but we're just going to over weather just a little bit all oh, this around the back here and we're going to pretend perhaps it's got picked up loads of muck and grime over this entire section okay and don't forget about weathering there's no real right and wrongs to it you do it until you're happy with it the only thing i would say is stop when you think you've gone too far, literally stop at that point. Chances are you haven't, but it's always a nice little spider sense tingling that says, I'm wrecking this. If you stop then and walk away from it, you can perhaps tone it back a little bit and move on. With all pigments, I'd stick the lids on straight away because I say they're particularly nasty. Now, what you can do, grabbing a cotton bud or your Q-tip, doing it dry, you can just give it a rub and you'll notice it on here. You can knock it back just a little bit okay and you can certainly do various things with it because you can wet it just a little bit dry it off on the back of your hand okay and you can do little streaky marks and various things okay and again you don't worry too much because when it dries it will go very subtle it looks quite horrendous when you do it first of all but as i say dry it down just keep using that one Okay. Then you come in with the dry side, you can just blend. All right, as you see, you can do all types of really quite smart weathering just like that. Now, the other thing you can do is obviously wet a brush and drag. So, if we just find a smallish brush, okay, so you can wet it and you can do streaking effects with a wet brush. Okay, and it's just a case of taking your time. Obviously, I'm speeding through this. Okay, you let it dry, it dries back, and you get those little differences in the shades and tones and everything else like that. That's the way of doing it. Now, to seal that in if you wanted to, my only recommendation is, is not to if you can help it, but if you have to, I would say flat coat, good two foot away, and very, very lightly build up two or three layers over the top of it. But pigment, by its nature, as we'll show you in a moment, has a habit of finding its way through. Okay, so it is best not to handle this stuff. It gives great effect as is, because what you see is what you get. As soon as you try and overcoat it, you'll lose it. But basically, that's the technique of using it dry. It acts as a light stain over a flat coat. Obviously, it's not going to work on a gloss because it's got nothing to grab onto. It needs something to physically bite onto to give it. But you can take your time, and if you want to, you can build up. And certainly, what we did with the washes all over this one, which was literally a two-minute job to do that, you could do the same thing as well. So you could take your time and various colours, obviously different manufacturers do a whole menagerie of colours, but certainly if you're using sands, dirts, things like that, you can give grime areas to various parts of it, polish stuff, clean everything else. But as I said, handling wise is the thing with it, because I've just done a tiny bit there and we're covered, it's everywhere already. It's not the nicest stuff to work with. Now, if you're going to be using it wet, okay, that's a totally different ball game. Okay, you can make up uh, basically a type of wash, okay, which is a pigment wash. Works really, really well. So, easiest way to do that, if we've got a nice cleanish cup, all you do, pop it down. Now, a couple of options, you can just use water. I find water tends to bead up a little bit and you need it to go good to sort of capillary action and flow. So, what I tend to use is oh, a little bit of thinners. This is just acrylic thinners couple of drops okay 
we tighten the dark dirt again and what you'll notice is you just hoof a little bit out pop it in and what this basically does is make a form of wash but as you can see it's quite a muddy chunky type lump to it just like this okay and we'll turn back to our tank again we just lift him up okay so exactly the same thing you can grab hold of it and we can go around and we can slap it into the wheels and actually make quite a muddy look as if we've been through heavy mud so if I just pick this one out here so we can just pretend we've gone through some real horrible crappy mud okay and you can build it up and basically pigment is paint okay it's basically what the founder of paint is what colors paint so all you're doing is very lightly painting but what this will do will dry back and give you the effect of mud okay on your wheels so if we just hung it all down on this track here and we can pretend we've gone through heavy mud here comes a Merlin helicopter so if we just continue to pop it all on the sides around this rear sprocket And then you generally coat the entire area as you go right the way around. But there we go. This gives you a sort of muddy look. The great thing is, I'm going to grab an airbrush just to dry this. We dry it back. It gives a nice look to it pretty much muddy on there. A couple of things you can do, okay, add a gloss to it. If you add a gloss to it, it'll always have that slightly wet look. So what you can do is you can come along, put the gloss in, it just makes it look wet. Another little tip you can do with it is like with PVA glue. This stuff though, which is quite handy, we don't want to technically break everything, will come off with a bit of a wipe. Okay, and a damp tissue, you can get back to roughly where you were before. And as you can see, by doing it this way, I've got the wash underneath coming off as well. Okay, and there we go. You can wipe off and you can start again. So it's quite maneuverable. It's not like you're using a proper paint which went it down, locks on, you can't do it. Hopefully you can see down in those wheels, you can give it a nice muddy look, something like that all over it. And then usual thing, if you clean off, sorry, it's just plain water in here. Clean your brush off. Pigments by their nature go on for miles, all right? It's a bit like when we've been using India ink, that it just carries on and just goes on and on and on. So what you can do is just wet a bit of cloth here. You can get it and you can grab and you can streak with it and pull it all around and give effects. So what I tend to do is try and keep it quite wet. Then I'll come in with a cotton bud and we'll do streaking with it just to try and blend it a little bit. Dry it down. Hopefully you can see you get some nice different tones of weathering. You can go very heavy weathering like we've done there and blending it in. But again, it's a personal choice. You can carry on, you can do as much or as little as you like and go all the way through. Your other option, of course, if you want to, is to mix it with something like a PVA glue, which I haven't got at the moment here because it's elsewhere. So what I'm gonna do is just show you how you knock this up. So what we're gonna do, is just grab a bit of uh, gator glue. If we just grab another upturned pot. Okay, so we're just gonna Grab a little bit of glue. Okay, just in like that. Then you grab your pigment, and what you'll notice is this will go rock hard. It sets like concrete very, very quickly. Okay, but what you can do with it is you can grab it like this. We're going to need a little bit more in here. Grab a 
bit more on the brush. Okay, you can pick up the pigment, and then if you wanted to, I'm not going to do it to be honest, you can bung it on the tank and slap it on. This stuff will dry basically clear, but it holds onto the pigment, so it gives the effect of mud. So you can do some great techniques with this. Now, I did a video many, many years ago about doing a brick house, it's old resin brick house, about weathering it with pigments and washes. Best thing to do is go and have a look at this, because I show how to do fire marks and burn marks using this very technique, because once this dries, it goes completely rock hard, gives a great effect of mud, flicked mud, you know, and all things like that. And as I said, because it goes completely hard, it's not like when you use normal PVA glue and it's always quite soft, you mix pigment with it, it turns to concrete and is very, very strong. But you can make up some very, very nice sort of weathering effects with it. Again, with armor, things like that, you can go around, you know, and do a menagerie of, of different things. So I'm just gonna clean this brush up a little bit because it's one of my better brushes. Okay, we'll fully clean that all out a little bit later. So there we go, that's two ways of doing it. Okay, so um, you guys send me stuff from time to time. Thank you very much. Okay, so Kevin sent me this. Okay, well actually he sent me a few others as well. Okay, now this is a pickup pencil. Um, you can buy them on eBay and they're about, I don't know, two quid for 12, they're really, really cheap. But anyway, I've never used one of these things before, but I thought, you know, obviously I'll try anything. So what it is basically designed for is for small parts. It's literally a pencil and it's like a wax pencil. So what it does is, let me just grab some. I'm looking for a piece of photo etch. Okay. So what you have, you're doing your, your photo etch bits and all the rest of it, and that's just assume you've got to place it somewhere. Now to be honest, this is sticky on the back, but this particular part isn't, okay? So, yes it is actually. So what you've actually got is, so I'm just getting the sticky off the back. So you're dealing with your tiny little photo etch bit, which is down here, something else like that. What you can do is, is pick it up with these guys, okay? Let me just bring that top camera down and show that again, because how clever is this? And these little pencils are great because they pick up quite a bit and they just hold on. But also I found is, it works with pretty much anything. So, all right, probably not something that size, but if you've got something small, just trying to find a little bit here, you know, let's assume you're trying to pick up small little bits of plastic. You can literally just give it a nudge and it will grip onto it and it holds it. So if you've got little tiny bits and you've got to place photo etch on your model, things like that, then what you can do, you can just come along, you pop him down. See, it's sticky on the other side. So there we go. You can just pick it up, come along, position where you want it. Okay, and you can say, okay, I want it right here. And you can just place it down and away you go. Now these things, I've been, to be honest, I've been using it, um, they last for around about sort of 20, 30 pickups. And all you do is just give it a quick, you know, normally a pencil sharpen, I must admit I've used a blade, a little sharpen and you just go along and you pick them up. But you can pick up tiny little things with it. Normally what I, my chosen way of doing it before learning about these was to use tiny little bit of blue tack on the end of an item, okay, and then you grab it and pick it up and do it just like this. The trouble with using something like that though is that when you go to place it down, you can't get it off the end, like this, of your thing. So you end up then having to get a pair of scissors and coming in and then sticking it down and hopefully away you go. Great thing with this thing though, come along, it's sticking a bit. Never use a piece of, we've got one here that isn't, that these guys aren't to be fail better. So there we go, we'll just show you this one more time. Tiny bit, picks up, just like so. Come along, place down, job done. Really, really easy. Now these things, as I say, buy them off eBay, you can get them, pack of 12, 199. Absolute bargain. Thank you, Kevin, for that one. I'll be using those, and as I say, he did actually send me a pack of 12, so I've put two in for the prize draw as well for this month, which he didn't mind me doing, and uh, thank you very much for that little tip. 
Okay, so six group builds. Um, we've had some small changes. I did warn a lot of people it's gonna happen. So we've moved things around a little bit, okay? So what we're gonna do now is pop over to the forum and I can talk you through it. Okay then guys, welcome into the forum. Um, usual things going on here. We're talking about the prize draw area. Here it is up here. So all you do, click on it. And with my speedy internet, you'll see Xmas draw up here. And then you'll come in and there's the video. And uh, all you do, like these other guys have done, count me in, pop it down here with a little bit of a Merry Christmas, everything else on there, and you're good to go. Really straightforward, very, very simple. And there's all the old ones down there. So at the moment, we've got like 481 of you have registered in there. So we've only got about a thousand odd still to go if you want to all get in there. Anyway, um, we're zipping down. Um, I know you don't like me scrolling too much, but down to the area down here, we've got the group build things going on so this is our little thing for it so the major plan is as we stand at the moment we've got the Fokker Wolf one okay which started that's uh, 23rd of November it's going to run 16th of March as you can see this is next year's planner for the group builds okay silver screen going on at the moment that's going to go to here which obviously as we know um, is going to be till 30th of April we've got the annual um, egg hunt this is the fourth year we've been doing this one um, which is Kevin's looking after so a uh, good one there. So obviously it's going to be the 5th of April to the 4th of May. Okay, the Fleet Air Arms SIG is going to go 15th of March to the 6th of June. Okay, we've got Night Fighters Through the Ages. Uh, that's the 17th of May to the 7th of September next year. Support Vehicle SIG we've got going, planned. 12th of January to the 4th of May. Okay, you've got 16 weeks on that one. Nice, easy one. Now we've got these planned ones as well. We've got, um, there's a, uh, a vote going on at the moment for your next armoured vehicle one. Um, so if you want to pop in there, you'll see, if you go into the area, I'll show you in a minute, you can go in there and vote on that one. And then we've got the post-apocalyptic uh, 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 vehicle mayhem sig uh, planned in there as well so that's the 5th of july uh, to the 26th of october i know we're thinking very much ahead and then the next big sig obviously after the silver scream one is going to be the 70th anniversary of operation overlord okay so that's going to be the d-day group build uh, which is going to start after there we've also got one as well planned in place for the 100th um, anniversary for the first world war as well 26th of june to the 6th of November okay so we've got some great builds coming on uh, next year as you can see all the way through so basically if we just zip back um, if you want to know all about the group builds and everything else down here it's down here in group build chat okay so just click in there you can come down and we've got the poles running down here we've got the armor pole which is run down so you can pick out the ones for 2014 so obviously you've got the Israeli Defense Force, the IDF stuff, UN vehicles, Middle East, uh, the Russian Cold War armored fighting vehicles or the Tiger SIG. Remember it's your votes that count, one vote each, plonk them in and away you go. Steve obviously covers it down in there for you. But it's important you vote so we all get a, a rough idea of what everybody wants. Okay so just going back again just to have a look into the silver screen because we have had a few entries down here. So down here we've got we've got the reveal ones, five finished so far. Okay, so Dean has done Iron Man, lovely colours on this, spot on with the colour work and everything else as you can see, really nicely done. Oh, that's me over scrolling. So as you can see, very nice hot candy pink is it, I think they call it, or hot candy red uh, with the gold nicely done on that one really really nice so congratulations to him uh what else we've got we've got a hurricane by joe as you can see my internet really is that bad cracking weathering job on this one got a nice dead flat finish to it as well and in some nice markings as you can see all the way through so congratulations to him it's amazing how quickly you guys are all finishing these things colonial viper We've covered this one before, so I won't go into it in depth again, but that one's in there. And we've got the vinyl kit. This is the C3PO 1.6 scale. As I say, vinyl kits. We're talking vac form. Ugh. Shivers down my spine. But you see, lovely job on that one. Nice painting of the wiring and everything else. So congratulations there. And last up, we've got the Lost in Space. I think we covered this one last time anyway. But you can see if it ever loads through. Okay, so um, I get asked loads of questions and everything else. And somebody said to me a couple of months ago, is, uh, what was your first model that you ever built? 
Now, um, I can't remember because, I, you know, I, I presume it was probably Matchbox, Airfix, something like that. Back in the day, it probably would have been a Spitfire or something of that ilk, okay? But I can't remember a specific one. One of my earliest memories, though, is I had as a Christmas gift the 132nd scale um, Eagle, okay? They called it the Strike Eagle. This is a Ravel one, okay? And it's the big one. Yeah, we all remember it. Um, and when I was going through some various stuff this week, I actually found this photo. Yes, this is it. This is the actual one I've had. That's not weathering, that's dust on the top where it used to live on my wardrobe. And uh, take note of that Phantom. Now, if anybody knows who the manufacturer of that Phantom was, please let me know. I've got no idea. Um, all I know is, I think looking at it, it's probably a B um, or a J, something else like that, Phantom. Obviously it's 148 scale, but it's this colour. Um, as you can see, where I used to fly it around so much as a young lad, I've actually worn the paint off down the intakes and everything else. Anyway, and also as you can see, the C, that's a uh, Black Hawk over the other side, and obviously I was being very creative and like, rearranging where the fuel tank used to be and things like that. All hand painted, as you can imagine, I didn't get actually near an airbrush until very recently in fact. Um, but there we go, so that is my earliest sort of memories of um, modeling and everything else. Those three there, I remember having those three and I would have been around about 13, 12, 13 years old with those and uh, hand painting and no colors, no weathering, no nothing whatsoever. It was just fun in those days, chucking them together, flying around the room and setting fire to them and things like that. So there we go, that answers that question. As I say, found the photo of it. It's the only photo I've got of any of my models post, well, pre, 1995 something else like that 1990 95 something else um when i sort of come back to the hobby properly and yeah really made my way through so there we go that's it for this week um hopefully we'll be really cracked on next week we'll continue doing the video coding and everything else as it goes up um we're going to have a good look around the forum next week's show and everything else hopefully i'll have the lower hull certainly painted here on the iwo jima so that will all be painted weathered and everything else ready for the flight deck to go on. I'm also working on all the small little ships for it. So there'll be loads of work going on with this one. Um, then we're gonna have probably one or two parts of the intruder up, which we'll have a good look in next week's show as we move through. So until next week, everybody, happy modeling and take care.